In the previous part of the lesson, we created an error handler which informed the user what had gone wrong and then simply ended the procedure. In some cases, it can be useful to continue running the procedure once the error handler has finished, and this part of the lesson explains how that works. Let's start by opening the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and when it's opened, choose to enable the content if we're asked. This workbook allows us to select a year from a drop-down list and then click either the Get Hit List or Get Flop List button to get a list of successful or poorly performing films. The code works by deleting the existing version of the Hit Results or Flop Results sheets. So if I click the Get Hit List button, I'll end up with a list of films from the year I've selected. The problem with this workbook potentially is if the Hit Results sheet doesn't already exist, let's right-click and delete it choose that we want to confirm to do that. And then if I choose to get the hit list again, this time the code will fail because the hit results sheet doesn't exist. We can click the debug button as usual to find out which line has caused the error. And there we go, it's the one that's highlighted in yellow. To solve this problem, we'll create an error handler which will create the hit results worksheet if it doesn't already exist. Let's reset the procedure and then add an on error statement immediately above the one which caused the error. We can say on error, go to, and then make up a label which describes what's going to happen. My label name will be called create hit result sheet. We'll also disable that error handler after the line which has caused the problem. And we can do that by saying on error, go to zero. Now let's scroll to the bottom of this subroutine and add an exit sub statement just before the end sub. This is to ensure that we can only enter our error handling section if an error has actually occurred. Following that, we can either write out or copy and paste our label that we referred to earlier. I'll copy create hit result sheet, paste it in after the exit sub statement and type in a colon after its name to convert it into a line label. Now we can add some instructions that will create the new hit results worksheet and then copy the column headings from the original hits sheet. Let's say worksheets dot add, and then we can also modify the name of the sheet once it's being added by altering the name property at the same time. I want the name of this worksheet to be the same as the one that we're trying to select up here. So to avoid mistyping that, I'll copy and paste. Once I've done that, I can copy the column headings from the original hits sheet. So I can say worksheets, open some parentheses and quotes, hits, close the quotes and parentheses, dot range A1 to C2 to get all the column headings, then copy those and send them or set the destination to the active cell. So the active cell will be cell A1 on the sheet that we've just created. So destination colon equals active cell. At this point, when the error handler is triggered, it will successfully set up a new hit results worksheet if it doesn't already exist. But then the procedure will simply end. We'd like to make sure that our code returns to the instruction which originally caused the runtime error and then continue running from that point. We can achieve this by adding the resume statement to the error handling section. So once we've finished setting up the new worksheet, we can simply say resume. The resume statement returns to the instruction which caused the error in the first place. In our case, that's the one that tries to select the worksheet called hit results. In this particular example, when we add a new worksheet, the hit results worksheet will be selected automatically. So there's no real reason to return to the same line that caused the original problem, as it's kind of redundant at this point. What we could do instead is use a resume next statement to resume the code at the line immediately after the one which caused the runtime error in the first place. In this case, that's the on error go to zero statement. And that's what we'll go for in this particular example. At this point, it's worthwhile stepping through the procedure using the F8 key just to make sure that our code is redirected to the correct places. So let's click into the subroutine and use the F8 key to begin stepping through. We'll collect the year chosen from the menu worksheet and then attempt to select the hit results sheet. Because that doesn't currently exist, when we hit F8, it will subsequently jump into the create hit results sheet section. We'll create and rename a new worksheet and then copy the column headings into that new sheet. And then we can resume at the line immediately after the one which caused the original problem. 
So at this point, I'll return to the on error go to zero statement. At this point then, when we continue pressing F8, we'll just proceed through the rest of the subroutine. I'm not going to step through all the uh, the four each loops there, so I'm just going to hit the F5 key to continue running that procedure all the way through to the end. And then we can check that we end up with a hit result sheet with films from the year that we had selected. It's also worthwhile quickly testing that your code works when the hit results sheet does exist. Just to reassure ourselves, we haven't introduced any unusual behavior. If I choose a different year from the drop down list, click the get hit results button, I'll end up with a different list of films.